Hi people, welcome to me sharing information around me developing my flying solo dance skills knowledge experience. I'm basically me saying, how did I develop my solo dance skills knowledge experience, values, attitudes and traits. I was sharing to you when I came back from the Caribbean at the age of eight years old after being sent there to toughen up after facing two years of violence, untold violence that led to me having a near-death experience. As an individual, I went to the Caribbean, I basically learned martial arts when I went there. I was taught martial arts, how to cope with certain scenarios when people approach me, etc, etc. <clears throat> My whole family knew why I was there, the teacher knew why I was there, to toughen me up to come back to Britain, to be much bigger, bolder and much stronger in the way that I um, approached life when I was. And I came back I'm more focused, I came back and I identified the individual I wanted to be an RAF officer pilot, jet pilot. Now, one of the key things what I wanted to share with people was I started to use sports and dance to shape the um, emotional stamina, to develop the emotional talent, mental stamina, the physical stamina that I would need in the future to be a RAF officer pilot. <clears throat> when I came back to Britain, my parents got me an academic coach, and he was not only my academic coach, he was my academic coach, my life coach. Special Education Needs Coach, my rehabilitation counsellor, he gave me counselling, how to cope emotionally with school life, um, going through bullying, etc. He was the person I went to, was the same person, do you understand? He identified what did I want to be, I identified I wanted to be an RF officer pilot, so he studied what it took to be an officer pilot. And me, me made me aware, first of all, you're going to have to get a degree, okay? That's what happens, you're going to have to do 11 plus, O levels back in the day, be GCSE for some videos today, A levels and a degree. What happens is you have to go around a route which is not a straight route. They're going to learn to be a mechanical engineer, a mechanical engineer or aeronautical engineer first. I said, cool, that's cool. <clears throat> Told me what I needed to do and I started on that road. So I was basically, because I went to be an RF officer pilot, I learned a lot about, first of all, medical testing. A lot of well, that I would have to get medical tests, I would have to get drug tests. So what happened, I was a very much person who was teetotal. I wasn't into drugs. I wasn't into alcohol. So the point, <clears throat> why am I making that point? At such a young age, I wasn't into these things. But you have to understand in the school, you have to understand kids got access to drugs. What they were doing, they were using spray cans. And I, that was very much in the in slums I was living in. Some of the kids, they actually used to use spray cans and take, take, um, take um, engaging drugs in that way, do you understand? And some people were sneaking their parents alcohol. I was not into none of that as an individual. So one of the key things was I had this very much self-care attitude, which my parents, I didn't only have it, my parents had nurtured me to have a self-care attitude for my body and what I put in my body, etc. And what happened was that when I came back from the Caribbean, sports opportunities started to arise and I found out I was a sports prodigy, but not only a sports prodigy, I was a performing arts prodigy, visual arts prodigy. I very much excelled in spatial awareness activities. I found out I was the best gymnast, best swimmer, <clears throat> best musician, boom, best footballer, cricketer, all these type of things I excelled in. Do you know what I'm saying? And very much did a lot of that from self-learning from home. Um, because as an individual, many people are unaware, the first private lessons I ever had were actually piano playing. Um, which I had from four years old to 11 as an individual. And what people don't, are not aware of, that many African-Caribbean parents or West Indian parents got their children piano lessons because it was identified as an activity that sh shaped their discipline, the mental capacity for studying. So, for example, in Britain, what you'd have here was be uh, a lot of girls, for example, were sent to ballet to do this exactly the same thing. So you'd have a lot of girls growing up from three years old, the parents have them in, boom, they would have like mu music classes, but they have ballet classes because it was seen as an activity that would prepare them for life. Well, similarly in the Caribbean, what they used was music. Do you understand? They'd get someone to give them private music lessons because music had an aptitude to shape your mind, to be ready for education. It gave you discipline. It gave you a social activity that you could share with other individuals, do you understand? So I had piano lessons, so did my brother and my sister, we had piano lessons, and it's important for people to know I had that. So very much I excelled in the school as an individual because of the early training my parents had. And my parents gave me a capacity 
to able to concentrate for these activities. I struggled as a person with dyslexia and passive education, mathematics, English language, because I didn't know what I was doing. But these other subjects like uh, music, as an individual, I excelled because it was about you learning, you engaging with the activity. Visual arts, I excelled. Gymnastics, I excelled. Swimming, I engaged. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you can engage in your own way of self-learning where other activities you didn't have the same, didn't have the same capacity to do so. Anyway, cut a long story short, what happened was from the age of eight to twenty, my focus was to be an RF officer pilot. But I kept failing my exams. I explained in my old I explained in the exams, but not engineering, so I need to explain. First of all, I was doing O levels at a private college. And at the same time, I was at engineering college and I was excelling in engineering on engineering projects. So computer aided design, engineering drawing, welding, <coughs> fabrication, electronics and all that. I was excelling in these things, but I wanted to get a degree. Do you understand? So what happened, I needed to pass my O levels and I kept failing my O levels. I failed it for six years on the run. Secondly, what happened was I had problems with my eyes. I had problems, I was getting disorientations. I was unaware this was to do with dyslexia. So with the dream to be an army officer pilot started to dwindle away. So when I came 20 years old, I made a decision. Oh, you know what? This is not going to be for me. But the ironic thing, I used dance as a vehicle to develop my courage, to develop my life skills, to develop my people skills. And dance was offering me, basically, dance offered me opportunities to self-sustain myself through college. So I took an opportunity to become a professional dancer, which I wasn't a professional dancer, but part-time. But I took an opportunity to become a professional dancer full-time because during the recession, there was nothing else I could have done that would make me money. And most importantly, at 20, I had my child, my son. So what happened was I decided I was going to become a dancer. But I had the background, I had a different background from all the dancers that made me excel. The background I had that was different to the dancers was I already had my own one-man show. And so when I...